Hey everyone and welcome back to Toby's Book Corner and in today's video I'm going to be talking about some of the classics that I've loved so far in my reading journey and I won't lie, classics, they were intimidating, they were a bit daunting to me and I think especially because I just associate a lot of classics with my like secondary school education, like English lit, you know, when you're like age 12 to like 16 and being forced to read these books that honestly, I think we were just, a lot of us were just too young to appreciate or understand like Wuthering Heights and Moon, <laughs> Shakespeare, <laughs> like I, of my and Men though, that one, that one, I was here for, but a lot of them I was like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some of you who you are able to love and appreciate those bodies of work at a young age, but me, <laughs> I was not one of them. So it's nice that I've been able to find a few that have, you know, they've piqued my interest, I've actually really enjoyed. And if you love classics, I hope you'll enjoy this video. If you're someone like me who is a bit intimidated, daunted, just like, yeah, not a bit of me, Hopefully there might be one or two or more in here that I'm going to recommend and talk about that you two might enjoy. So let me stop rambling and let's get into the video. So the first book I want to talk about was one that I absolutely fell in love with in 2021. And that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And I gave this 4.5 stars. And to be honest, it was very close to five stars. But if you've read this, chapter 11, chapter 11, what was going on? What was going on there? If that chapter was not included, this would have been five stars. So this book is about decadence. It's about hedonism. It's about pleasure. It's about morality and the very skewed, blurred lines of morality. And it's set in Victorian England and we're following Dorian Gray. <laughs> so we follow Dorian Gray who becomes obsessed and enthralled with this exquisite portrait of him and in Victorian England he's deemed to be this really handsome, good-looking, youthful man that a lot of people esteem and aspire to be like and then he makes friends with Lord Henry Wotton who really is the one who teaches him about hedonism and pursuing pleasure at all costs and when i say all costs i mean all costs so then we see as dorian starts living this double life where he is perceived to be this true gentleman in polite english victorian society but behind closed doors he is pursuing his innermost desires and it doesn't matter how immoral it may be for him to achieve that pleasure that hedonism he will go for it at all costs and of course as I said he's being perceived as this true gentleman to the public however it's this exquisite portrait that he became obsessed with the one that made him truly realize his beauty um that is what actually shows his depravity and it shows his ugliness and the just his true inner core nature his true being the ugliness within and that is shown and reflected in this portrait and so it's just this really moralistic tale about thinking you're above the laws of morality and thinking that those laws don't apply to you about being image conscious about hedonism about being pleasure seeking and it's funny how relevant it is still in our society which is very image conscious of course like i would have wished there was more diversity in this book but i mean it's set in victorian england like what do you expect oscar wilde's writing is exquisite it's beautiful and it kind of this story almost does parallel oscar wilde's life because he was having to present himself to society as a heterosexual man because being a gay man was illegal and of course he was you know living his true in the most desires behind closed doors of course being gay is not <laughs> equivalent to what my guy Doria was doing in this book. He was doing immoral stuff. And this book also does show how even those who do often think that they're above the laws of morality, how consciousness usually, ah, it comes to say, hi, hi, hello. And you can see how that conscience, consciousness, consciousness, no, conscience conscience how the burden of conscience can all oh, weigh heavy 
heavy so the portrait that reveals and reflects dorian's true nature really kind of shows how your conscience is always gonna peek through oh, next we have one of my all-time favorite books it was one of my favorite books of 2021 last year you know she's chilling over there just say, say hi to her the master and margarita by mikhail bolgakov and this is a modern classic of Russian literature. So this book is bizarre. It's wonderful. It's out there, nonsensical, wacky. There are a few books which are as weird as this book is and I was so here for it. It's just an extremely witty and clever portrayal of life during the Soviet Union in the 1930s under Stalin's reign and the wacky characters, the nonsensical plot lines just perfectly capture the absurdity of Stalinism. Then here you kind of just see that for Bolgakov life is just this great big cosmic joke. But there are of course some very strong, clear and apparent political messages in here. So from the opening pages you were taken on this whirlwind trip through 1920s Moscow where we're accompanying Voland who is the devil, i.e. Stalin. Uh, big black fat cats who is the size of a large pig if I remember correctly and also a couple of the devil's other assistants and we see as they come and wreak havoc and chaos in Moscow and just turn life upside down the way that the Stalin, Stalin, <laughs> Stalin regime did to everyday normal people in Russia. So it's called The Master and Margarita and they're both characters in this novel. And the master's work is rejected by the literary elite and this is a parallel to Bolkakov's life because he was kept at arm's length from the Soviet literary establishment. He had, you know, lots of difficulty getting his foot in the door. So you see how this is almost semi-autobiographical to an extent. Then as well what I loved is that Stalin's Moscow in this book is mixed in with these dark biblical elements because we have a second storyline adjacent to the Master and Margarita storyline which is about Pontius Pilate and Jesus. Very hyperbolic version of Pontius Pilate and Jesus and the way that these stories end up interweaving and the way they just like converge and come together at the end was just done masterfully like i just this book honestly suspend disbelief from the jump from the beginning as i said you're joining the devil a cat that can talk and walk on its two hind legs and the devil's assistant in moscow so you know just go with the flow go it's a fun wacky just exciting ride and i absolutely loved it it won't be for everyone. The wackiness, the nonsensical aspects of it, I might not be a bit of you, but if you're someone who enjoys just something just a bit out there, just a bit weird, then this could be for you if you love a little bit of political satire, you know, social commentary done in not your bog standard way, then this is for you. So next I want to talk about a short story which I literally just picked up on a whim and I am so glad I did and that's The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. It's really explored mental health issues especially when women have mental health issues and how historically it always gets deemed as hysteria and it's not taken seriously it's brushed aside they just need to put them on bed rest they're just being you know overexcited overstimulated dramatic it's women so I love how that's explored in a almost in this like it's in this fictional but almost horror tale and you just feel the protagonist despair, hopelessness, emotional turmoil. They jump off the pages, it will aggravate you, but it is done so well. And it is unfortunate that it does still hold that element of truth and of reality of our society where real problems are still very much pushed to the side, brushed aside when it comes to still, when it comes to women, especially when it's women of colour. But it also is a great reminder of how the outlook when it comes to mental health issues is really evolving in our society. It's creepy, it's eerie, it will stick with you because the descriptions and as I said, just that 
bear that comes through the pages in such a short amount of time is phenomenal the next book i want to talk about is one that i read not too too long ago and i've spoken about it a couple of times on this channel and i have a reading vlog on it so i'll link it down below and that is frankenstein by mary shelley and ah oh, this is one of the classic gothic literary tales that is very beloved and rightly so this story if, if you don't know what it's about because honestly before this year i actually did not properly know what frankenstein was about i knew there was a monster and that was about it but it's actually about frankenstein who decides hey i want to create some life he does so he is successful and then not just him but those close to him those around him now have to all deal with the consequences of his actions him saying i want to play god and not thinking about what comes with that and the responsibilities and the blurred lines of morality and all of that good stuff and Shelley with this tale really just shows the cyclical nature of hatred of vengeance of when one is ostracized or cast out of society how just that desire to be accepted and to have community is can just overtake your life and be all consuming and it just shows how relationships and community are such fundamental parts of humanity and of our society also there's just such great exploration of what it means to live a fulfilling life and how one perceives that is dependent on their environment on their upbringing what they've seen or perceived to be a good life and how that can manifest itself in different ways in one's life also Shelley just really shows the dangers of the progression of science and technology and as I said there are just so many blurred lines of morality of good of evil of bad and I just love how you will be questioning who the true villain is by the end of the novel and it's just ah oh, fantastic and the fact Mary Shelley was 19 19 19 ah wow just wow 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 and then the final classic that i want to talk about is the odyssey by homer and the one that i read and loved was translated by robert fagels so the odyssey this is like i guess you'd call this call it the sequel to the iliad so the iliad that's all about the trojan war achilles all of that good stuff and in the Odyssey, we're now following Odysseus as he journeys back from Troy to Ithaca to his wife and his son and his home. It's wonderful to see Odysseus's reliance on his wit, on his intellect for survival, on this decade-long journey, voyage home, as he has to encounter and face natural forces, divine forces, and how it's just uh, a wonderful peek into his mind, into his just his clear want for survival. Like he is going to see his wife and child again. No one can tell him anything. I just love seeing that resilience throughout the novel. And then Robert Fagel's translation, the writing was lyrical it was poetic this was like a poem to me and it meant that it was really enjoyable to not just you know sit down and read it in one sitting like i wanted to soak in these words these phrases just taking the beauty of the writing i did do classics at gcsc so i did love like ancient history and it just kind of revived that love that i had when i was a teenager for ancient history especially when it comes to ancient greece and it are oh, phenomenal i personally would recommend maybe having like a, like a base knowledge or foundation of some greek myths or retellings like you could read the song of achilles or law just stephen fry's mythos like or just even just do a little bit of research for some context just because some of the writing like it can be quite easy to get lost at times so if you at least are like oh wait but i know it's athena who did blah 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 blah, blah. it's easy to then kind of get back on track if you're a bit like what is going on right now so i would say that 
but I do think this is one where you don't need to have like studied extensively or have a vast amount of knowledge of ancient Greece because I didn't so I still absolutely enjoyed it a solid 4.5 stars so those are the five classics that I've enjoyed so far in my reading journey there's quite a few more that I would love to pick up and that are on my TBR and I would hope to do another video where I talk about those classics but if you have any recommendations of ones that you think I may enjoy or ones that are your absolute favorites please comment them down below let me know and if you loved any of these let me know your thoughts too let's talk in the comments if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to join this small chaotic corner of the internet then subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye